Now that the Christmas and New Year's celebrations are done, it's time to get back to something that I knew I was dreading. Right back to a Dragon Ball fanfic that got more popular than it should have been. No more forgetting this, Chapter 7. It had been a few weeks since Gohan's job promotion, and Fidel finding out she was pregnant. Word of the two events eventually got around, and everybody had been calling in to wish the Sun family congratulations. Oh, you mean he actually kept a connection with each other? While Chi Chi was at overly first overly excited about the news of a grand new grandchild, she was quickly reminded that Gohan and Videl would be moving to North City soon. So the new baby would not be right next door like Patton had been. The realization prompted a slight crying fit. Gee, maybe, bitch, you should learn how to fly. She then turned her attention to her other son. The main answer is to when he was going to get married and have children. Needless to say, the situation for the young demi saying was uncomfortable. <sighs> Bitch. Go Ted's gay. All those girls you've seen are beards. He's gay. D just deal with it. He's gay for trunks. And trunks is bi. I, I don't know how to tell you this. God, you seriously gonna leave me in North City and leave with her, leave me with her? Gotcha joked on his brother, who laughed back in response. Gohan says it several times that his mother and brothers should move. If not with him and Videl, then near some of their friends in West or Satin City. However, neither Chi Chi nor Goten had a desire to relocate. Both thought of 439 East District as their home, and moving would be like moving part of, part of their family. They did, however, on several occasions, accompany Fidel and Gohan to North City to look for a house. Eventually, the couple decided on one located on the outskirts of the city. It also happened to be one near the best schools in the area for Pond and their future child. A digital bonus of the location was relatively close to where Chao Tzu and Tian lived. Oh sure, I bet it's going to be real great visiting those two. I mean, just totally exciting. Why not just go to a capsule uh, store and buy a capsule house? During visit to the house to sign some last paperwork with the realtor, or, you know, go to a capsule house store, Fidel and Pan ran into Chaozu and Tian. You guys live around here? Pan asked happily. Yep. Tian confirmed and pointed towards the mountain range here, not far away. You see that mountain in the middle there? We live right at the base of it. That's so close! Pond said exactly. We can see each other every day. The pair laughed before Chelsea responded. Well, even we don't see each other every day, we can certainly see you guys a lot more often, now that you live so close. Um, Vic, have you met Tian? He's not exactly sociable. Ying! <laughs> Pond jumped for joy. She had been a bit apprehensive about the move, given that she would be moving away from her grandparents and uncle. But now she knew this new place would have people she considered family living nearby. It made her feel more comfortable about moving. It would be a relief for her parents. Come on, Pam. Fidel said, coming up to her. We have to get going to see Grandpa and Boo. Oh, that's right. Tian remembered. It's your wedding anniversary today. Go on, mentioned you two were going to a nice restaurant in downtown Satin City. Yep. He has a business to attend to, and we're meeting him there. This little one's going to spend some time at Grandpa's while we enjoy a nice night out. Must have served, I'm sure. Tian continued. I can only imagine how stressful it is preparing for such a move. Fidel sighed. It's had its ups and downs, but it hasn't been hard as I thought it would be. Hey, um, do you know what makes the transition easier? There's a compartment in every capsule court building that you can press that'll turn the building back into a capsule. Not to mention... There are storage luggages out there that contain all these things and have the ability to contain a lot of stuff. Why does he use that? Tian took the opportunity to inquire about his old friend. And how's Gohan doing? He had outright said about the Goku Gohan situation that Pond was right there. Sunset was clear. But El smiled. He's doing rather well. I think he's really happy with everything right now. Excited about this move, we're all considering this a new chapter in our lives. To the duo, it sounded like things were starting to ease. 
tension didn't seem as high as it had been before. Perhaps this move was exactly what this family needed. Whenever Goku did come back, it would probably be best that there was some space between father and son. That way they could take their time and not feel rushed into any conversation. Sometimes things work best at a slow and steady pace. Tetsu signed back. That's wonderful to hear. If there's anything we can do to help. Will do. Fidel thanked it before she and Pond said their goodbyes and headed off. That evening, while Gohan and Videl enjoyed the night in the town for their anniversary, Mr. Satin babysat Pon and Bra, who had come over for a sleepover with a friend. Late into the evening, the two young girls decided to have a tea party with Boo. So, Pan, how does it feel knowing you're going to be a big sister? Bra asked, taking a sip of their tea. I'm super excited! Pon screamed. I know that I was a girl, I'm glad to have a baby sister. Aww. Bra responded as he marveled with respect for her best friend having a younger sister. No. 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 Um. Trixie, contract. Contract! Here you go. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been specifically understood in my contract ever since I started this live retail that, ahem, when it comes to DBC fanfics, I am not allowed nor permitted to ever read dialogue or any type of story revolving around the pink creature known as Boo. For I have described him as the worst thing to happen to Dragon Ball since Gen Fukunaga. So as you can see, I cannot read for Bo dialogue for Boo. So just imagine he said something. Thank you. Oh, though, I have to ask, considering what Pan and Bra have been through, I'm sorry, but while I'm used to generals in our world, the real world, sometimes when it comes to alternate universes, I've got to ask how they work. So I'll be the mind, but I'm skipping this scene before I bash my head in for the stupidity. Alright, you two monsters, time for bed. Aw, uh, do we have to? Pond asked with a sad face. It was a face that always got to Mr. Sutton. Oh, uh, well. He stumbled his words. Wesley B. Gage's rescue ran up to Pond. Look at your face. <laughs> Please stop. Pond laughed as he ran towards Bra, hiding behind her. B followed Pond and began to lick Bra, who came to his reaction. Okay, okay, we'll go to bed. Pon said, laughing through the laughter. The girls were right out the door, giggling as the level K9 teased them down to get the more cult the kisses. Mr. Sidon laughed lightly and turned to his friend. Again, I remind you of my contract, line three. As May rolled around the dawn, Followed by a lovely misty scent that wafted through the air, but then everybody says Iris. My, the, getting that new Dicklet Plus to inspire you for that Pokemon joke, wasn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Decided that Gohan and his family would be moving near the end of the month, shortly before his birthday. This would give the family enough time to settle into the new house before his new job started in June. With most of the logics regarding the move around squared away, things became rather quiet. Then came May 7th, the one year anniversary of the 28th Tenkaichi Budokai. The one year anniversary when Goku left. It was also training day for Gohan and Piccolo. Masako! A powerful energy beam ripped through the desolate terrain and collided with a giant pillar, reducing it to mere rubble. Gohan took deep breaths in and out as he floated down to take a seat on the edge of the cliff, where his brother, tagging along for a day, was already sitting. That's enough for today. Piccolo was shouted from above. He then ascended to where the two brothers rested. For the past several hours, the three had been doing non-stop with high-intensity training. Their clothes were tattered and slick threats were in their faces. They were all exhausted, but Gohan did not want to stop. While his body was telling him to rest, his mind kept pushing forward, telling him to keep going. Behind that drive was anger. He was angry because he knew what today was. As he awoke, he couldn't stop thinking about it. Get a life! He closed his eyes in order to stare at himself. It was exactly one year ago today that his father left. One full year without a single word from him. It was an event that had changed everything. 
an event that caused him to be where he was now, training. After a few seconds, he opened his eyes and warily stood up, stumbling as he did so. His fatigue didn't faze him, though. He was determined to keep going. You know, I just had a thought. Mir and Roshi only trained Goku and Krillin for about six months to a year. We have things called hyperbolic time chambers. And, of course, there are things like Otherworld and other ways that time could be manipulated. Hell, there's a room of illusionary time travel within God's temple. How can we be so sure Goku would spend a year away? I mean... Now that I think about it, everybody's acting like, oh, it's going to be forever. Hell, even a lot of critiques of the finale are like, Goku left his family forever. I know if I had that retreat, that critique. Or, oh, Goku left his family for years. And even GT falls into this. But the longest Goku's ever trained outside of, you know, his death, was an actual master was six months with Kai. I'm gonna be so sure six months later Goku did go boop okay I'm back I told you guys I wasn't gonna be gone I didn't know when I was gonna be back God Guys are acting like this is a forever, but in the fact, Goku could probably finish everything up he knows in a month. One full year without a single word, word from him. After a few seconds, Go Gohan stood up. Well, Gunten stood up, almost to catch when he stumbled. He put a hand on his shoulder. It's been a long day. Do any more, you could hurt yourself. He's having a concerned look. As a matter of fact, Goku also knows that sometimes the best training comes from training yourself, so what's stopping Goku from going, Okay, here are the basics. Bye now! Go and pause for a moment. I saw the thought begin to outweigh his emotions. He realized his brother was right. Okay, enough for today. He replies the two sat down together. It still surprised him how well his brother knew him. Sometimes all it took was a few simple words to bring things to better focus. The girls sat beside him as they all continued to cast their breath, fist up the last of their water that he brought with him. Not much was said between the three for the next several minutes as they rested. Nobody wanted to broach the subject as this was all in their minds, the proverbial elephant in the world. Since he discovered, Gohan stood up and proclaimed it was time for him to head home. You coming, Gohan? Goten? He asked as he picked up his bag. You go ahead. I just want to relax a bit more. Not used to this type of training, his brother answered. Go on, smart. All right. Don't stay there too late, your mom will worry. Go to not in agreement. Go on, turn his attention to Piccolo. Well, I guess I'll see you in a few days for our next sensu ass session. And Mekki and stood up and reached his belt, pulled out a sensu bean! Here. You really were tired today. Take this before you take your head off. I'm fine, really. Go on, Elder Zan. Just need a shower and some rest. Not wanting to argue, Piccolo hesitantly put the sensu back into his belt. You both have a good night. Gohan waved before rising into the air, flying off at tremendous speed towards his house. Even after all this tiresome training, he still had an incredible amount of energy left in him. Laying down, Gohan watched the night sky and took a deep breath of the cold night air. After a few moments, Piccolo broke the silence. What's on your mind, Gohan? The demi seemed smart to look down. Isn't that easy to read? Piccolo smiled back. Got to his side as he sat back up and looked at the horizon. I was just thinking about what the future holds. So much has changed recently, and I don't know how to feel. The day was emotional, not only for Gohan, but for all of us. He turned to face the mech hand. It's been a year today since he left, and he hasn't tried to get in contact with anyone. I defended him at first, but now I have my doubts. What, what if he never comes back? Well, then, you 
go get yourself the ability to sense key, which you have, and fly! Just fly! So, so ah! Does anybody in the show have any sense of brains? Anybody! Does anybody here have any self actualization at all? Piccolo did not know how to respond. He could only offer sympathies. Girlton, I'm sorry for what's happened. Me too. He said, holding back some tears. He wasn't as upset as his brother, rather sad by all of this. Tell me, Piccolo, why does he do this? Why does he just disappear? Well, um,. Piccolo was responsible for it the first time, and Gohan was responsible for the second. I don't know, but ever since I've known your father, he's been this way. Always trying to look for a worthy opponent. Somebody stronger than him. But in the end, he always surpasses him, and the cycle starts all over again. According to Vegeta, it's the saying in him. And Vegeta's feeling really, really insulted that he hasn't been taught to at all in this fic! But he has a choice, Goten said coldly. Piccolo was taken aback by this comment. It had been a long time since the two of them thus discussed the issue at hand, but he was so surprised nonetheless. I repeat my earlier observation. We keep acting like Goku's going to be gone for years, but... How can we be so sure? Because... Master Roshi's done the same thing. Train for a little bit, then just let them fly and be on their own. Hell. Even Vegeta and Trunks did all they need to in about a few months in the world of spirits at time. And Pickle and Pumpo can apparently turn off the uh, twi twice a day limit. There's. Really, nothing stopping Goku from grabbing Oob, training him for about a year with Zen there, giving him all he needs to know how to continue to harness his strength, and then boom! Well, Goku got go on to where he needed to do in a year! As a matter of fact, there's nothing here that stops it from just being a year! Gotten stood up and continued before Piccolo could respond. He's always had a choice. Yeah, like with that Piccolo incident. This past year, he chose to completely ignore us. Heck, the only contact they once had with him for the two days after the tournament when he called Mr. Satan about the money he promised Oob. And nobody traced it, put a tracker, axed the guy who can barely have super hearing, picked it up the next day in Sutton City with very little conversation. We don't know where he is or anything else. I bring you back to my first few points. For all he knows, something tragic has happened, and one of us is dead. Now making your Dragon Balls. But besides that, he can sense key! This whole entire key sense thing is kind of easy. Tears starting to make down his way to his face. He was starting to understand the hurt his brother talked about. With Gohan missing the pain he experienced in his childhood, of having to see his dad leave and come back. Again! Dying! Planet! Dying! Leave and come back, knowing neither, neither either was going to happen. Well, hey, as long as we didn't have uh, Gohan uh, give in to his rage, we were perfectly fine! I didn't understand. I didn't understand then. But I'd be keen to understand now. I thought it was hard not having a father for the first seven years of my life. It was hard as finally having him, after all this time losing him. It's been me and of a side, and if it hurts like this, the first time it's happening, I can't imagine the hurt and pain Gohan's been through when Dad was absent so frequently. I continue to bring this up. I know the Team Four Star joke of, bye son, but now that I think about it, that line's only been said twice. In all Team Four Star. And the whole bit of Gohan getting mad about Goku not being around in the Frieza arc 
really doesn't make much sense when you sit down and realize that uh, Goku was dead for a year! And Gohan left as soon after Goku was in the hospital! Piccolo walked up to him and placed his arm on his shoulder. It was a moment that felt surreal to him. He began to think of himself of the many times he had done this with Gohan when Goku was gone. Yeah, and now, here's a scene of Piccolo covering Gohan when Gohan was go when Goku was gone. What, what, what do you mean? I don't have any extra power. Allow me to demonstrate. So, ah! Boom! I thought so. His power begins to increase when he gets anger. As you can see, you have a great attempt of potential. See? Totally covering Goku. Gohan when Goku was gone. Just like how Piccolo abandoned Gohan to fend for himself for six months. How Piccolo was completely dismissive of Gohan's feelings when he threw Gohan into a war zone. Totally supportive. A few minutes passing, Go Tamer King's composure. Sent away for Piccolo and asked one question on his mind. Piccolo, how much stronger has he gotten? Let's just say he's reached a power beyond that of when he saw Mons and Boo. So considerably stronger. Good. Go Tamer King when his face was dry. Maybe your father won't leave anymore. If Gohan could prove to him it's not necessary. Good. Maybe you could also get off your ass? You're not going to get off your ass, are you? Now he picked up his bag and waved goodbye. Thank you, he muttered. Piccolo just smiled and eyed. Goten took off towards his home. Piccolo just, just close to young warrior that Gohan surpassed his old self months ago. And that was just the power he was displaying. You could tell Gohan held back during the training. So it's anybody's guess how powerful he truly become. I think it was also out, anyone's guess how strong Goku would become. The only thing he knew for certain was no limit to a science, his power, or its determination. Ring, ring, ring! Ring, ring, ring! Phone call! Phone call! Hello? Bulma greeted as he answered the phone. Hi, Bulma. Fidel said on the other end of the line. I well, wonder you guys will be at Gohan's birthday party next weekend. Of course, Fidel. <laughs> it's not just his birthday, but one of your last days in the house. We gotta see you guys off. Thank you so very much, Bulma. We'll see you guys at 6 o'clock next Friday. Oh, before I forget, it's a surprise party. Gohan has no idea. Alright, sounds good. Don't worry about finding out. My lips are sealed. Thank, thanks, and see you guys next week. Goodbye. And with that, Fidel hold up and press his hair. But when her family are good to go, the bitch who had been planning to party with her daughter in law put check marks next to Bumble's family. Okay, well, that's your daughter list. Looks like everyone can make it. She so looked up and smiled. Great. Thank you so much, Chi for helping me plan this party. I don't think I could have done it myself. Fidel wiped her brow. After days of making arrangements and calling people, so everything was finally set. Neither could wait to see on look at Gohan's face. A remote village, an elderly woman walked outside. Didn't it, Zitty? She shouted. The two fires in the sky immediately stopped and flew down to the house. Before she could set the last bowl on the table, the pair, who spent all day training, were seated with their top six in hand. The woman let a small lift. You but is a hungry, I take it. Her question was answered with a vigorous head nods. Soon the rest of the family had made their way to the table, and were all enjoying a hearty meal. As time passed, everyone shared stories about their day and the work they were involved with. Eventually, the conversation was focused on the newcomer, who had been with the family for a whole year at this point. So, Goku, how does training been going? Is Aub listening to your instructions? Oh yeah, it's been going great. It's been going very well. In fact, since we started training a year ago, Scoob's skills have increased faster than anyone I know. Goku said with a smile. Who blessed, but deep inside he was eternally grateful for what Goku had done for him in his village. The money provided by his son had saved the village from the depths of poverty and now a thriving farming community. Then we say thank you, Goku, for coming here to help our village and to mentor young Oob. Everyone raised their glasses in thanks to him. To all those present, he had been to state and <laughs> couldn't thank him enough. To Goku! Everyone toasted. Later that night, as Goku and Oob laid their beds across from one another, Oob wondered about what training and exercises or activities mentor had planned for the upcoming weekend. And that's another thing. Do we really think Goku could keep going for that long for a year with all these training and exercises? 
、ガクガタロ。先生、アメリカのインスタデートチェリーです、ウィーケンド。Um, I'd like to bring your attention to this, um, other small part of my contract. It says that I'm allowed to do oob, so long as I'm allowed to do in a stereotypical and badly done Indian voice. As long as I can do that, I am free to do oob. g o k u g o d o r a s young p u b b l e shook his head. Not this weekend. I'm actually going away. Oob jumped up from his bed in a slight panic. Eh? w h e r e did you be going? You'll be back late. Goku laughed as he tried to calm the youngster down. Don't worry, I'll be back in a few days. I just want to visit my family and pick up something from my house I want you to have. Who sat back down on his bed? You want me to have something? Like a gift. Goku nodded. It was something I had when I was your age, and helped protect me as well. You'll have to promise me you'll continue training while I'm gone. I bet it's, Who said with a smile. He was sitting to lay back on his bed. Again. How do we know Goku's gonna spend years away? He might even just spend two days! Well, everybody's acting like Goku just said, Yeah, I'm spending, a, I'm spending eternity away. When for all we know, it'll be over in a few hours. a s l i k e that would be a great joke. I'm surprised Toriyama didn't decide to end Dragon Ball with that gag instead! Yeah, I can see it! It would fit totally with Dragon Ball style! Oh, uh, I'll, I'll do the joke in a bit. Bit. Good consent, huh? Thank you for everything, whatever. Okay. <gasps> Alright, see it like this. Everybody's feeling down that Goku said, I'll be I don't know when I'll be back. And he leaves with Ub in tow, and they fly off, and everybody goes home. And the moment they get back home, They still are here. Boop! Okay, I'm back. Go on. Y you're back? Chi Chi. What? But. You said you didn't know when you'll be back. I thought you went out to train Oob. I did. And? I grabbed a spare. I went over to Kami's lookout. Trained for a little while. And then I went to Oob's home. Trained with there for a bit. And then I was done. I said I didn't know when I'll be back. I didn't say I was going to be gone forever. I figured a few hours was good enough long enough. I mean, it's good enough for me. You'll be fine. Makes it easy, don't it?